This lesson is on the trig rules for derivatives, the shortcut rules for the six trig functions. Um, and so first of all, we'll show you what those are. The derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. The derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. Um, and be careful with that because obviously this one's positive, this one's negative, but they, they feel like they're the reverse of each other. So um, just be real careful with your signs there. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. The derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. So again, you have a similar relationship. Note which one is negative. The derivative of secant is secant times tangent, and the derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant times cotangent. Um, and whenever we're doing these, we are going to also be using the chain rule when it's not a plain x. So all of these have obviously plain x's, but if I had 5x or x squared, I would be doing the chain rule and multiplying by that derivative following this piece. So here are some examples that we're going to do using these trig rules. And um, the first one, our derivative, Um, our derivative, you're going to bring down that 2 that's in front because it doesn't have an x with it, so that means it's not a product rule. This is just like when we had a number in front of our exponential rules or something like that. So I bring that down. And then I do my trig rule because that's what's next. And the derivative of sine is cosine, so I change that to cosine. But I keep what's in the parentheses the same. And then whatever is in the parentheses, since it's not a plain x, I'm going to multiply by its derivative at the end. Okay, when we get to example 2, what you have to remember is that the cosine squared x really means that this problem is cosine of x squared. It's like the whole thing. And you have to think of it that way because it means that you're going to have to do a chain rule here. And so my derivative will be, you do the outside, so if you cover up this part with your thumb or whatever, you just do your two parentheses to the one, which we don't typically write the one power, and you keep the inside the same. And then you multiply by the derivative of the inside, the inside being cosine of x, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. I don't have to go to a third because this is a plain x, so I don't have... I mean, the derivative of that is just 1, so you could put times 1, but you don't really need it. Okay, so example 3, we have y equals secant of x squared. So my derivative, this time the squared is just with the x, and it's on the inside, so I'm going to do the derivative of the secant first. The rule for secant is secant times tangent. When you write that, you write the x squared with both of them. So I'm going to say secant of x squared times tangent of x squared. That is how we write that secant rule. But then because the x squared is not plain x, we have to multiply by its derivative. So the derivative of x squared is 2x. So I'm going to multiply by that on the end. Okay, for example 4, Again, I have that 2 in front that's just a number. It doesn't have an x with it, so I'm not doing a product rule, although you can do product rules when you do have variables there. Um, I'm just going to bring that one down, and then I do the derivative of tangent. Well, the derivative of tangent is secant squared, so you don't mess with that 3t yet. You just change that tangent to secant squared and you keep that 3t, and then the last step is to do that 3t's derivative, so the derivative of 3t would be 3. Okay, number 5, we have y equals the cosecant of 1 minus x, so again, our derivative of cosecant, you have to look up the rule, it's negative cosecant times cotangent. In that case, I keep that parentheses the same until I've done that part, so I'm going to say negative cosecant of 1 minus x times cotangent of 1 minus x. And that takes care of the cosecant part. And then I multiply by the derivative of the inside. And the derivative of the inside would just be a negative 1. 
For example, 6, we've mixed in a quotient, so we will be using the quotient rule. So our derivative will be a fraction, since we are using the quotient rule. So I'm doing the bottom times the derivative of the top. And if you think about it, the derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. So bottom times derivative of the top minus the top. And then the derivative of the bottom. Again, the derivative of 1 is 0. I have that negative. It's kind of like the 2 in the previous problems. I bring that in. Then the derivative of tangent is secant squared. And finally, we are over the bottom squared. So bottom times derivative of the top minus top times derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared. Example 7 is a product rule because this 2 has an x with it, unlike the ones that we had done before that didn't. So that tells you right there you have a product of two things that have variables in them. And so the 2x will be my first piece and the cosine of 4x will be my second piece. So my derivative will be first times the derivative of the second. And the derivative of cosine of 4x would be negative sine of 4x because that's what the cosine becomes. And then the derivative of 4x is 4, so you chain rule that part. So I have first times derivative of the second. Then I'm going to do plus the second times the derivative of the first, which would just be a 2. And I like to put them in parentheses like this just to make sure that when I do simplify, I use the correct multiplication and signs and don't mix those things up. Okay, for example 8, we're going to mix in the exponential rule because uh, our base is e and then our variable is in the exponent. It's also happening to include trig. So our derivative, first of all, overall this is an exponential, so I need to repeat. And normally I would multiply by the natural log of the base, but obviously the natural log of the e is 1. Those kind of cancel. And then um, I'm going to do the derivative of the exponent. And so the derivative of cosine x would be negative sine of x. Since the x is plain, I don't have anything else other than an understood 1 out here, so I'm going to stop here. Our final example, um, we have a composition, so y equals sine of the cotangent of x. And anytime you have a composition, you know it's going to use a chain rule. So my derivative, I'm going to do chain rule. So I do the derivative of the outside, and the derivative of sine is cosine. So I'm changing that one, but I keep the inside the same. And then I go to the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. So I'm going to multiply by negative cosecant squared. Because this is a plain x, I only have an understood 1 out here, and I don't have anything else to add on. And that concludes my examples for this lesson.